I tried to get all. So how are you? It's going to be hard because Jesus, Mike, where'd you go? Aren't you up and about? No, I got one. Oh, you got one. I got one. This bike never said anything when I was in training. It was very quiet. Then he gets up here and he comes to life. It's amazing how people come to life. And he was talking about employing staff. So um, it is. So you decide when you're going to employ someone. And you talk when you're at full capacity. So if you're at full capacity now in spring, are you going to become more efficient really quickly? Probably not. Because it's going to take time to train them. Mike says a couple of weeks, sometimes it can take longer. Are you better in the middle of winter when it's a bit quiet and you want to get up to that full capacity so it's the first time you've employed someone? We're talking, you're not employing new staff. So do you go, okay, I'm going to take a small hit on profit, but I'm going to get them up and training and when we're fully up and running and leads are at a million miles an hour, we've got the capacity to take on the extra work because they will drain you even for a couple of weeks if you get them up to speed if they've got no skills. Okay, so that's how you sort of, you got to think about that when you want to grow your business. When am I going to do it? You're not necessarily going to sometimes employ someone, like you said, it's not, you're doing 10,000, you're not going to double your profit because they're never going to work as hard as you. Or it's going to take time to get them to the 8,000, it might be 6,000 for the first month, 7,000, 8,000, and you finally get them there. Okay, now you've got them at capacity and where do you want, where you want them. So it's, it's, it's something you've got to think about when you're going to do it. For me, when I go to employ people, I'm trying, always thinking, like when I started to, so if I employed my first person, okay, my next person, I started to think in March, we're going to struggle when spring hits. So I need to start thinking about employing now. Six months out and start to get them trained up for the next time. So I'm starting to forward plan where all our work is, okay? Um, Mike talks about not turning on leads, okay, about work. I hardly turn, I don't turn on leads. Our, growth, our business has grown by itself. So you can see the planning in, we can see the business just growing on its own by itself. So think about when you're going to employ, because it can be hard and what capacity you're going to get. Um, now, who do you employ? If you're a single person in the truck, I'm an old man, okay? You're gonna put an 18 year old kid in there with you in that truck. What are the dynamics in that truck gonna be? Are you gonna go, Jesus, all they wanna to listen to is Nova 100 or something, or talk about, I don't know what they're talking about. So you gotta think. So then you go, but the 18 year old kid's really good, so I've gotta get my brain around their conversation. Okay, so what their conversation is. So you're thinking about what sort of person am I looking for? Am I looking for a more mature person that I can have a conversation in the truck? It's even if you've got a second truck, the person in that truck's a really good employee and you're going to stick some niff-naff that's going to bore them to tears that they want to jump out the door. So they're becoming less efficient. So it's really important about the dynamics of the, tr of the truck and also the dynamics of what's going on inside that truck, okay? We'll talk a bit more about that. So that, yeah, so whether you're a young person, a mature person, so what do you want to do? Um, do you want full-time or casual? I'm actually a big time for full-time employees because you know what that does? It gives them security. You know, that's what I reckon the problem is out in the labour force now. We, we don't want to pay them all their, um, right, their, uh, priv their um, sick pay holiday, entitlements, that's the word I was looking for all their entitlements, so we pay them casually. Okay, well that's really good, but I want a day off today and they're a casual employee, well what can you do? Nothing. The person then, if they're a good employee and you give them security, do you reckon they're gonna reward you then? They're more rewarded to you, you're giving them security. They can go on holidays, they get paid. They can get sick, they get paid. Their children get sick, they're gonna get a day's pay. You're rewarding the person for working for you. You're treating them like a really good human being. I honestly believe that's half the problem with the why people chop and change now. There's too much casual and not enough invested in and giving them security and making them feel wanted and loved in your organisation. We, we treat people a bit like numbers. So you sort of got to think about that. I just employ full time. It's the odd casual person because that's they come to me from a friend or something and that's what they want and they're good, you know, they just, 
That's what they need. Um, then you've got to think, you want a skilled person so you don't have to train them much. God in this labour force, good luck finding one. And it's really tricky. It's hard. Cause, and I give, so you get skills. Be a bit careful with skills. We had a recent employee, and I'm just giving you a tip when you come to employ, had all the tickets, TAFE tickets in the world. Made me look like I knew nothing. And they were bloody hopeless. They had no skill at all. All they had was pieces of paper where they'd sat in there and been told, you can do this. Okay, so be a little bit careful when they say their skills. Try and find out what their skills actually are. I actually like, I don't mind not a lot of experience at all. You can train them your way. It's not, it's not rocket science what we're doing. It's not difficult. Push a mower, cut a hedge, cut it, mow straight lines. It's pretty quick to try and teach that. Well, I'm talking about mowing because I'm in mowing. Sorry, there's other people. But the skills we're doing, it's not as difficult as we make it out to be. And you can train people. We've all probably come into this industry with no skill and taught ourselves with very little skill and upskilled ourselves very good. So you can do the same thing with your staff. It's quite a good way to try and train people. And then you get them to your system and to your business and the way we do work. Does that make any sense? Apprenticeships are another good one. You know, you give person a skill. They get a qualification at the end. Young people, everyone, you know, so at the end of the day, especially in our, like in my industry, an apprenticeship, um, you can get a skill and then it can take you other ways if you leave. Okay? So think about that. And there are some good benefits. The government do pay you some good, um, some, some good benefits with apprentices at the moment. So it's good, but it's hard to find them. You've just got to go through. When you come to look for staff, everyone goes how hard it is. Try and take that out of your mind. Because you've got a negative thought in your head that this is going to be difficult. You've got to really go how, you know, it's not that difficult. People will come along, try and have a positive attitude towards it. You know, you've got to find, you know, you've got to have that positive attitude. So at least that way when someone comes in, you're up and about about who's coming in. You're up and about, okay? Um, and, you know, like I said, what that brings to your team. Okay, where do you find them? Employment, so, employment sites are good. Anyone ever used the employment sites? Yeah. You get some good laughs off the employment sites too. So some great applications. I had one who applied and said he wasn't a psycho and he didn't want to kill me, he just wanted a job. <laughs> I kid you not. That was... That was worth the $385 I paid for that month for that ad boy because it gave me the greatest laugh. I actually wanted to interview him to see what the hell happened. But anyway, I didn't. My wife wouldn't let me. She said, you can't do that to someone. Apprenticeship groups, they're, always diffi they're still difficult because they struggle like anyone to find them. Um, now, when you get older, ask your friends because there's always kids or people or someone hasn't got a job. There's other people out there and they're normally really good because they'll come with good personalities, good skills, good work ethics. They come from that same sort of group of people that you're hanging around with. So friends and stuff, and anyway, people walked up to you in the street. TAFEs are another place. We do a lot of TAFE courses now. Governments are paying for all these TAFE courses. The kids get all these TAFE certificates and they're looking for jobs. Ring the TAFE. Say, I've got a job. Who wants a job? And there'll be TAFE guys in there that'll go, yeah, here you go, mate, here's a job. Because remember, those TAFE teachers also get marked. Am I supposed to stand there or am I allowed to walk around, Joel? I just saw that cry. <laughs> I walk around everywhere and wave my hands around. Um, so, yeah, those are TAFE, TAFE places. The good TAFE teachers will find those kids' jobs as well. And they'll probably give you the good kids that are at the TAFE. Okay, ring TAFEs. Find out where the jobs are coming. Um, interview, you talked about an interview, Mike. Interview someone, talk, to, find out about the person. Don't worry about their skills. You want to find out who they are, what sort of person they are. Well, you know, families they come from is good. You know, do they, what sort of family do they come from? What are their hobbies? Good look, look on Facebook, you'll soon find out stuff because idiots put everything on Facebook. You know, drugs, whatever they're doing. You'll soon find out what they're going on. They put everything on Facebook. But when you come to the interview, you know, find out who they are as a person. You know, what they do, their interests, 
you know, their family life. A lot of people come from hard family lives and they really want to go and, and you can encourage them. So just talk to the person, find out. I like putting them in the truck with me. I love it. Put them in the truck for a day. I might put them in the truck with me or someone else at work and they come around and they wander around and we find out who they are and we pay them for the day and if they're happy, they stay. If they're not, if we're not happy, we just get rid of them, we part off and they've got a day's labour and we move on to the next person because you can't really tell what's going on and then sometimes they know what goes on in the job. So, um, and you know what? One of the rewarding things I find from employing people, it's not just about monetary value, okay? Yeah, we've got to make a monetary return but it's also you develop these great human beings um, we've been really lucky, you know, we've got, we've trained up people, people come with a lot of issues now. There's a lot of issues out in society and work is one of the best things we ever do for people. It gives them purpose in their life. Their whole demeanour changes. You'll see these people come in like this for a job interview and after about two weeks they stand up straight, their life is in their face, they feel like they belong in society. And, and you, you start, I go to work and look at them and go, how much fun is this? The person's come to life. So you've got to think about what else is coming out of this for you. It's monetary, yep, but there's also the reward of you now getting a human being. And that human being, when you develop them up, all of a sudden can be running another truck, running another staff member, and they bring so much to you. So, you know, we've got that. We've trained up apprentices at one apprentice that won two apprenticeships of the year. So that becomes really rewarding when we see that apprenticeship of the year twice in a row. Never happened at TAFE, never happened with a gyms bloke. I'm really proud of that fact. We have a guy who has really bad mental health issues, right? And he, he, quit. he quit after two days. He said, I'm effing shit at this, I quit. And I took him aside and I brought him back in. And Tom has some issues, he does some things and he runs off. But we look after him and he's come to life and he's got purpose and he's really good. And I feel really good about myself because if he wasn't for us and the culture we bring into our work and how we treat everybody and we, we give them the bonuses, the little things we put, you know, yesterday we paid for everyone's lunches at work and so everyone was happy and they do those little bits and they're all happy to come to work. But Tommy's probably the greatest thing I ever have done. All monetary values aside, to see Tom flourish as a human being, he come out of the army with all these issues is the proudest thing I reckon I've ever done. So employing people, apart from monetary value, brings you a lot of things. Growing your business. So have a crack, but you've got to have that positive attitude about when you're employing people. Just keep churning through, be happy. Someone will turn up eventually. And the other thing is you do get people who leave. I've had two apprentices leave. Then they ring me back and say, I completed my apprenticeship and thank you very much, John, for the opportunities you gave us for the couple of years we were here to start with. Just didn't work out for one reason or another. I reckon that's a good... That's a good thing if you can do that. That's the culture you bring to your thing. That's what I say about full-time employment. It engage them in their family. Bring them into your, you know, make it like it's a big family. They are your family. There's big rewards in employing people. No questions? He's taken all the questions. Have you tried, uh, have you tried to go to like a local high school or something to look like detail and stuff? Or what about, let's say, disability I probably haven't tried them. I do use someone who has some disability. He doesn't have disability. He's got uh, slight learning issues. He lives around the corner from home. Lovely kid. We use him a bit. And we don't expect much from him, but we put him out there and he picks up a bit of rubbish and he carries on and he helps us. High schools I haven't tried. We do have one kid working from VCAL for us for work experience, which is supposed to be for $5 a day. We don't give him $5 a day. I can't do that to the poor kid. <laughs> Can't. Well, we probably all did work experience. Some of you do work experience to get the five to three dollars a day. I think back when I did it. Um, yeah. So that human development thing. You know, the other thing is reward. So employing people, you know, helps you to grow your business. Okay. Also, don't forget, like Mike said, you're it. If you're an only person in that truck, and you're driving around working like a madman. Okay, and you're earning, you probably are earning good money, but you go on holidays, guess what? You're earning jack, you're earning nothing, not a cent. Your business is stopped. Is it a business? No, I just reckon it's a hard working job. That's what I classify it as. 
Now, if I've employed somebody or I've got a couple of employees that go on holidays, guess what's happening? They're generating income while I'm away. They're keeping the business ticking over. So your business is still running. The business is just not dependent on you. It's now a business. You're not the face of the business. You're not the number one man. So you sort of got to then, when, if you put another truck on, you've got to let those reins go out and trust the people to do what they do. Send them out with all the tools and all the information and the schedules and everything and trust they're going to do it. And look at what's going on and what they're bringing in. Um, yeah, and development of people, that's what I always said. Now, and Mike touched on this, don't expect them to work like you. They're never going to work that hard. You're not going to double revenue. They're not, it's not their business. And sometimes they're not going to come to work and they're going to... And they're not, always, they're, going to get, they're not always going to be motivated to work that hard. You've got to try and keep them upbeat and try and push them along, but they're not always motivated. One of the big downfalls is, I always say, as long as my phone doesn't ring before 6.15 in the morning, I know they're all coming to work, and that's when I'm in the sweet spot of the day that all my planning is work, because they ain't ringing at 6 o'clock going, I woke up early today, John, can I come to work? <laughs> no one's doing that. They're going to be sick. And if you get these issues, I got one guy who worked for another guy. He had so many days off sick. So you know what I did? I put, and he was a good worker. I put him aside and I said, this can't go on. I can't work like this. You've had this many days off. I know you don't get paid. Stiff. I need you to come to work because we rely on you. Every time you don't come to work, you let down the rest of us because someone else has to pick up the slack. Not necessarily me, someone else in the in the organisation. So you put, put the pressure back on them. Guess what? Steps up. He, another guy at work who worked with him for 10 years said, I can't believe how much he turns up for work now. Because we put the pressure back on him. We didn't mean that he had to come to work, but he was failing all his workmates. So we made him accountable for just taking stupid sick days off because he couldn't be fagged coming to work or something. So you make him accountable and then he has. He's picked up his act. To his credit, he's picked up his act. And you know what? Then you go and tell him, mate, I'm so proud of the way you've developed. You've stopped taking those stupid days off. You're here at work. And when he rings up sick, he's just about crying because he doesn't, he doesn't want to ring up sick. So we've encouraged him to come. Uh, any questions? That's all I've got. But when you go out with employing people, take that positive attitude. Don't take a negative attitude. And keep churning and burning a few of them. You'll get through it. Remember, we're not employing future leaders of the country in some of our jobs, especially in mowing. I'm talking about mowing. So, when we're not. No, no, no. One of my mates said this, and it made a lot of sense. It was, a, I know it sounds a bit disrespectful, but it makes a lot of sense because then you get your brain around it and you go, they're not necessarily going to be stimulating conversation or whatever, but you get your brain around it, then you, you know what you're going to employ. So then that person actually becomes more valuable to you because you understand that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, you understand that person. So then you start to think and have that conversation with them about what they do in their lives, okay? The things they do and the things that make them happy. And then you know what happens? They keep turning up to work. They keep turning up to work. And even like, if you have different trucks, find the dynamics of, I don't know, do you do it trying to find the dynamics of two people in a truck? We don't really know. No. You're sort of more friendly, yeah. So you're trying to find, when we put out there, trying to find two people who fit well together in the truck. Because then you know what? Each of them want to come to work because they want to have that social conversation while they're moving around in the truck or they're at work. So that's really important. Same as they don't want some old man boring about how his wife's nagging the hell out of him to do whatever or whatever. I do that the dynamic thing in the truck. Yeah, it works. There's two guys in my truck who love punting. And they're texting each other all day and night. And they work really well together. I put another bloke in there that, with him once, and he only talks about his sport and racing. This is one of my really good mates too. I put another bloke in there and he said to me, well, he doesn't talk about anything. He's got, you've got to get him out of the truck. I'm going to throw him out of the truck. He's not going to leave me, but I've gone, okay, no worries. I'll sort it out for you. I was trying to get him to train him up. But yeah, that dynamics in the truck, it's important. So you can then... Those people want to come to work. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to encourage people to come to work. So full-time staff, rewards like you said, whether it's monetary, buying them lunch, a slab of beer, you know, chocolates and drinks in the fridge when they get back, um, whatever it is. 
Lenny and, you know, whatever it is. It, it makes them feel like they're a part of us and they're part of my family. Um, <laughs> well, sometimes it can be a week. Sometimes, it, yeah, it's normally three months, we'll say. We give them a probation of three months, but normally you'll pick it up within probably a week and say, look, you don't fit us. You've got to remember, in Jim's mowing, okay, we go bang, 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 bang. It's not for everybody because it's a lot of moving around. Those people probably want to cancel a job where they're just sitting in, on their butt in a ride on or whatever and not doing much. So, yeah, I give them about three months, but normally within, I reckon, two weeks, you can tell. Do you, do you have uh, something written down when you employ people? Do you have some sort of contract? Oh, yeah, there's a standard. You can get that off Fair Work Australia. There's a standard contract you can download off Fair Work Australia. And you just fill in your details? Yeah, yeah, just fill in your details. Okay. Mm. And that specifies all your... Well, you can put stuff in there as well. But, yeah, it gives you the three months probation... But you talk to, when they first start, keep communicating with people. Yeah, you know. If it's not written down, then if the expectations are not clear on both sides. Yeah, don't be too fearful about everything. Don't be too fearful that the world's going to come crashing down on you. You know, I had someone quit the other week, Monday morning. They ring up in tears, oh, I'm sick, I can't come to work, I quit. And I go, yeah, good on you, whatever. Don't come back, we'll pay you out for the end of the week, see you later. And get rid of them. I don't want that virus inside my workplace. Because I reckon if they're there, they'll start bitching. And they start, it's a virus is inside, so then they might create some negativity somewhere out. So I just throw them out. I did have an apprentice who wanted to move closer to home and she was in tears thinking I was going to throw her out the door in two weeks, but she was a different staff member. But that sort of, you, you create, sometimes people go, okay, it's all good, but yeah, get rid of that virus out of your place. Get it out. Pay it out. Don't worry about it. Get it out. You don't want the virus there. They're not happy there, then... Too bad. We're a good place. You create that culture in that place where you want to be. Think about, I hate that word culture, but footy clubs bring that in very well. And they develop this big family where they're all in together and all unity. You watch sporting clubs when they're playing really well. Do you reckon it's because they're more skilled than other sides? I don't reckon it is. I reckon it's because they all want to be together and they're all for the greater cause of, each, of the, the goal whatever the goal, the goal is. So the goal is for us to get our work done. So they're all for that cause. So we all pull together in one direction. I reckon footy clubs get their culture or sporting clubs get their culture right and the people, they come for the ride. You get them for the ride. Get them for the ride. Be, you know what? And it just digressed fractionally. He talked about why don't you turn your leads on, employ people. You're all here to want to grow your businesses, aren't you? You're all brave human beings before you were here. You bought a Jim's man franchise and you stepped out of the school. You stepped out of being a normal person and made change. Most of you aren't young people, okay? It's not like you were 19 and decided, I didn't like mowing lawns, so now I'm going to go and become an accountant. You had done something and you made a change. So you're really brave human beings. So be brave in the next step in your business. You've already done the bravest thing. The rest of it's really easy. You've taken the big step. You know, encourage yourself and go for it. Make that step. You've, you've made the step today. You've, wasted, you've spent a good day, a Saturday, a weekend in here to try and learn. And listen to me bang on and Joel bang on and Dan bang on and Jim and Rocky and all of us. So let's make something out of it. Take the step. It's not that scary. What's the worst that happens? You fail? Oh, Jesus. Give me a break. You know what? I'd sooner have failed a million times than never have tried to fail. So come on, have a crack. You'll be right, I promise you. If you've got any questions when you have a crack, ring me up. I'm happy. I'll talk you through it. I'll help you as much as you can. Have a crack. I do it at training. No, you can ring me and you can contact me from 5am in the morning till 8pm at night, six days a week, and I will answer my phone. If I don't answer my phone at 5am, at um, 
There'll either be two reasons. I can't hear it or I died. Can you see that? <laughs> now that's my number. All right. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Really, I am. I'm happy to help everyone. I love it. This, this is a big family. It's a big family. We're all here to help each other and grow and make ourselves better. And our lives great. All right. All good?